Artificial Intelligence. Hi there, I'm Jim, one of the solutions engineers with Edge Impulse, and today I'm going to take you through another data synthesis demo looking at keyword spotting. So we're going to go from end to end uh, data set generation all the way to deployment on how you would go about creating a keyword spotting uh, device. Today I'm going to be using one of our Python notebooks in the public Edge Impulse notebooks repository on GitHub. Uh, in this case, it's the Google text to speech keyword data set creation notebook. And this is going to guide us through how you can use Google's text to speech API to automatically generate a keyword data set and then add noise to that data set to make it more representative of the real world all without ever having to say words yourself and create a really robust model that we can deploy. Before we get started, you'll first need to clone this repository, the notebooks repository, so that you have this Python notebook ready to use. And then you'll also need Python and Jupyter Notebooks to run this Python notebook. And there are a couple of pip Python packages which are useful for this project. PyDub, we're going to use uh, to do some audio layering and layer in some noise and cut up our samples. Google's cloud, Google Cloud Text-to-Speech we'll use to download the samples from Google and make requests for each word that we want to create. And then requests we'll be using for um, downloading a background noise file to layer in. Once we've imported all the necessary libraries, we'll set up our Google Text-to-Speech API. And the first thing you'll need to do is head over to your Google Cloud account, which you'll have set up previously. Click Try It Free and enable Google Cloud Text-to-Speech API in your Google Cloud account. And then what you'll need to do is download a credentials JSON file for your Google Cloud account so that the API uh, can authenticate itself when you call it in Python. And there are some instructions here on how to do that by creating a service account. And then we just need to set our environment variable down here, the Google application credentials file and give it the path to your Google Applications Credentials JSON file. And then that is all we need to do to set up. So I'll just run those two. Firstly, we need to set which words we want to detect with our keyword spotting model. In this case, I've gone for artificial and intelligence. Generally, multisyllabic words are easier to detect in these um, low power keyword spotting models because there are fewer overlap words. So if the sample contains a single syllable, then it could be triggered by multiple different words if they sound similar. Um, so we'll just set those here. Run that. Then there are some parameters for our speech data set, and these are the parameters which will make up all of the different combinations that we're going to uh, generate for each keyword. So there's a whole list of languages and dialects you can use with Google's text-to-speech API. I've picked out the English ones for now. Um, but if you want to do this in another language, there are all of those languages available there. I've chosen a number of different pitches to generate. And these are generated in the semitones range from minus 20 to 20 semitones. Picked out uh, the three uh, available voice genders, and then we picked out some speaking rates as well. So this means that our data set will not just be um, one voice saying artificial intelligence, which would just be two samples. We'll get all four voices, each of them saying every single pitch, every single gender, every single speaking rate. And then there are some other key parameters that we're just going to go through. Output length is the minimum output length we want for each sample. In this case, um, we're going to choose one second, and you'll see why later. But that means that if the sample is shorter than that, we'll pad it out with silence or with noise to make sure that it's um, the right length. The maximum number of keywords to generate, we're going to give it a, a number to target um, at the upper end. So if there are more combinations of all of these different parameters than 800, then it will restrict that down. An output directory for the raw samples, so this is where the clean samples will go. An output folder for the noisy samples, so once the noise is layered on top of them, to give it more of a real world representation, and that's where those will go. A URL, which is uh, one of a free sound file of some background chatter that we're going to use to layer in over the top. Number of copies of noisy samples to create. So this is how many copies of different slices of noise do we want to apply to each sample. So for every single voice saying artificial, 
will get three artificials, each with different bits of noise at different noise levels to give it a bit of variation. And then this is the maximum noise level um, to apply to it. So we'll just run that. Then we need to check that our output folders are all ready and then if they don't exist, we'll create them. Download our background noise file. And then all we need to do next is generate all the different combinations of parameters that we desire. So in this case, we're just going to iterate through all of the different pitches, genders, languages, speaking rates, um, keywords, and create a whole list with each entry having a unique different sample uh, keyword parameterization. And then we're just going to check if the maximum number that we set earlier is uh, less than the number of options, then we'll just restrict that down. So you can see here, we're going to be generating 1440 samples. So now on to the meat of the application. What happens here is we're going to firstly initialize our text-to-speech client and then go through every single option in that options list that we created earlier, set our parameters for the particular uh, voice sample that we want to pull down from Google's text-to-speech API, set our output file name for the raw file, and then just check if the file exists for that parameter already. And if, if it does, then we won't re-download it because it'll just be the same file. And that saves you a bit of um, a, a few characters from your limit in Google's text-to-speech API. And then we'll write it to the file if it hasn't been downloaded before. And then what we'll do is load that file into PyDub, which is an audio sampling um, library. Add silence to pad it out if it's less than the length of our desired um, minimum sample length. And then just go through for the number of copies we want, adding a random noise segment from that noise file that we downloaded, mixing it on top of the voice sample and then saving it to an output file. So we feed into a JSON file at the end of the program uh, all of this data in the JSON format with the path and the label telling it which file has which label. And then I've also added in some metadata for debugging so that we can see what are the different parameters that we have given for each sample. And then right at the end, we just output uh, that into a JSON file so that when we upload it in a second, uh, the uploader, the command line uploader knows which metadata is for which file. So I'll just run that through. The text to speech has been done now. We've created our sample set, and if I just pop over here, we can see that we've got our two output folders, and in the noisy folder, we've got a load of different files. I can open one of these in Audacity just to show you the waveform. You can see that we've got noise layered over the top of this, and I'm not sure if you'll hear this, but I can layer it in later. Intelligence. There we go. So we've got a nice data set there. And in order to upload that to the platform, we're going to use the Edge Impulse Uploader command line tool with an info file, which we generated earlier. And we're going to pass in every single file in the output noisy folder. So I'll just copy that over to our command line here, cd into code slash notebooks. So when you first run this command line tool, it will ask you to log in and then select the project that you want. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, so we've logged in there and we're just going to choose the project that we want to use. Keywords generation demo is the one that I'm doing. So I'm going to click that and now it's going to upload and I'll come back when that's done. All our voice samples are now uploaded and we can head over into data acquisition here and see that they've appeared in the program. Artificial. And they've been split between test and train data. Now if we go back to our Python notebook, we'll see what next. So we've got our keywords to create our keyword detection model, but we don't currently have any background noise, so any baseline uh, for our microphone to classify as not the words that we want. And we also don't have any unknown words so if you said something that wasn't artificial or intelligence or background noise, how would our model know 
that you aren't trying to say one of those things unless we give it some words as well. Now that's not a problem because Edge Impulse, we've got a pre-built data set for which we've taken from Google Speech Commands and Microsoft Scalable Noisy Speech data set containing some unknown and noise samples. It's also got some yes and no, but we're not interested in that. So if you download that data set, unzip it, then we can just head over to our project and use upload to take all of our unknown samples, which I've unzipped previously, and also all of our noise samples. So we'll just select those and upload them as well. So there we go, we've got a data set which is pretty well split between our two keywords, noise and unknown words. And that's split nicely between our test and train data sets. Okay, now it's time to create our impulse. We're going to start off by choosing our window size to be a thousand milliseconds, and we'll have an overlap of 500 milliseconds for each sample. We'll leave our frequency as it is, but you can resample as you see fit if it works better for your application. Now, for processing, we're going to choose an MFE block. And we're going to use this block here, a keyword spotting transfer learning model. And this is where we'll fine tune a pre trained keyword spotting model while, with our current data. And this gives us really good performance even with not very much data. And that's why we've chosen this window size and this uh, DSP block here, because those are the ones that are supported by uh, that particular model. Okay, we'll save our impulse. And then all we need to do is go in and generate our feature set. Our features have been generated and you can see that there's a good amount of separation between all of our noise and unknown samples and uh, the artificial and intelligent samples. So I think we'll be all right for this. Now for transfer learning, we're going to change our model here because MobileNet V2 has quite a high RAM usage and the board I want to target is this board here, a PSOC 63 board which has a little bit less RAM. So we're going to use MobileNet V1 for this particular keyword spotting model because it has a lower RAM usage. And then we're just gonna maybe up the number of training cycles a little and make this a little smaller, give it a better chance to find the best accuracy and start our training. Our model's been trained and we're getting pretty good accuracy here. You can see that most of the inaccuracy is between the noise and unknown categories, but we're not so interested in those. We're mostly interested in the artificial and intelligent keywords. So let's see how it performs under model testing with some unseen data. There we go, we're getting similar levels of, of accuracy there. And again, pretty strong accuracy between the two labels we're actually interested in. I'm going to run performance calibration on this model, which is a new feature to Edge Impulse, which helps you work out which parameters uh, for post-processing to use when working with audio samples, which are event-based. And it layers real-world audio over and gives you a little graph looking at the false negative versus the false positive rate of your model in the real world. So we'll just click uh, background noise is our noise label. We're not interested in finding unknown samples. We're only interested in detecting artificial and intelligence. And then we want to generate, let's start with 30 minutes of audio there, and we'll run the test. The results from the performance calibration are here, and you can see we get a really nice curve balancing our false rejection rate with our false activation rate. So I'm going to pick a value somewhere in the middle here. And this is where we get a low false acceptance rate and a slightly higher false rejection rate, but that's OK. So we'll save that configuration. And this will be applied when we deploy our model. So if we go to deployment, now we're in deployment. What I've got here with me today is this board down here the Infineon PSOC 63 uh, development kit, the Pioneer kit, and it's a newly supported board on Edge Impulse. It's a really nice chipset that's uh, ultra low power from Infineon, and we can build firmware for it directly in Studio. 
Let's analyze the optimizations to see how it's going to perform on our device. So there we go. If we choose our quantized model, then it'll fit within our flash and we'll get very low latency and still pretty good accuracy. So I'm going to build that. The firmware's built, so we'll just extract that. And then we'll open up Cypress Programmer here, which is the uh, flashing tool for this board. I'm just going to plug the board in. It should appear here. Okay, we're connected. I'm going to open up that hex file that we've just downloaded. Click connect and program. Now that's programmed, we can disconnect. Head over to a new terminal window. Now to see the output of the model running directly on our PSOC 63 board, and all I need to do, because it's fully supported and we flash the firmware, is run edge impulse run impulse. And I'm going to give it the continuous flag so that we get a continuous output. So there we go, we're getting a continuous output there from the model. And now let's try saying some words. Artificial. Intelligence. Artificial. Intelligence. Artificial. Intelligence. Artificial. Intelligence. So there we go. We managed to uh, run that on the PSOC 63 and we got it to detect the words that we were asking for and it didn't detect any words while we were just talking normally. So that bodes well. Obviously this uh, model could be tuned and improved and perhaps adding in some real world data alongside the computer generated data set would improve the accuracy. Now data synthesis is a really powerful tool to get you your first prototype really quickly of a working model. But obviously in the field, you want to collect more data and perform some more tuning to really improve the accuracy of your model. I hope this was an interesting walkthrough showing really how quickly you can go from zero to a fully working prototype with the Edge Impulse platform, even without having any data to start with. If you want to learn more about this project, then do head down into the description where the notebooks file that I used to uh, generate the data set will be listed as a GitHub repository, or head over to our documentation to find out even more and check out our other videos. Thanks for watching. It's been a pleasure. Goodbye.